Hey everyone, welcome to Taking the Pulse, a healthcare and life sciences video podcast. I am Heather Hoops Matthews here in the studio today with Maynard Nexon healthcare attorney Matthew Roberts. Matthew, good, good to, see to be you. with you. We are joined today by Dr. John Hooser. He is the president of Gaston College, a public community college in Dallas, North Carolina, serving more than 20,000 students each year through over 100 programs leading to degrees, diplomas, and certificates. Dr. Hooser has more than 30 years of leadership and, and administrative experience in the North Carolina community college system and holds multiple advanced degrees and certificates. Dr. Hooser, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Would you please start us off by giving us a brief overview of your background, tenure at the college since June of 2020, that tough year, and just some uh, what your major initiatives have been? Well, thank you. Yes. Uh, so people call me crazy and uh, we, we, my wife and I moved um, to Belmont in Gaston County in, in May of 2020. The shutdown of course occurred then and then I took over an institution that uh, had closed uh, for the pandemic, much like everything else. But during that time frame, we took the opportunity to, to really uh, look at how we were going to come out of the pandemic. What, what does that look like coming, coming uh, forward? So we had um, we had put some things in place that we knew were, were critically important with our partnership with our healthcare industry sectors within the county and beyond. Um, and we also looked at what's going on, not only nationally, but internationally in the world of cybersecurity, as well as we have, uh, we are the home of the North Carolina Center for Applied Textile Technology, which at that time we remained open during the pandemic because we were developing testing and producing uh, protective equipment for a healthcare industry. The swabs that we all use for the uh, COVID test was developed at our center in partnership with a company, local company. And we were only three of uh, testing agencies nationally that who could test these products so they would be protecting our healthcare workers. That's impressive. So, yeah. Yeah, so you think about you think about those three categories and how they intermix and intertwine with one another. That has been our focus and initiatives for for the past uh, going on four years. It's health sciences, cybersecurity, and the advanced materials and textile industry. Well, Dr. Hooser, we know that the community colleges play an important role in the state, but what may what people may not know is that they play an important role in the life sciences industry as well. And you've got some good news about your new Health Science Education and Simulation Center. Can you talk a little bit about this this Health Science and Education and, and, and Simulation Center facility that you've, you're you're building, and and what motivated Gaston College to pursue this? Well, I think the motivation was intrinsic, um, mm -hmm. as I just described. Right. But, but even prior to the pandemic, there was concern with healthcare workers mm -hmm. and the number shortage. This compounded the issue and it complicated the issue as well. Because while we continued training and educating nurses on our campus, it was in a remote position. We also have a clinical requirement that's required by the State Board of Education and State Board of Nursing. So how do we get our clinical, uh, our students the clinical needs and training that, that, that was required to become registered nurses? So we started working and talking in partnership with Caramont Health, uh, Atrium Health, and, and Novant. And that led us to, to think about a state-of-art facility that, that would ensure that the future of our students and our families and citizens are we were all prepared for this growth in the healthcare sector. So we proposed a, an expansion to our the North Carolina General Assembly. Our local legislators were tremendous in helping support this and all legislators statewide that funded us $60 million uh, to develop a state-of-the-art world-class health science education and simulation center. So what that what that means, Matthew, is that we, we're looking at not only at the emerging workforce and the pathways from high schools to, to college, but we're looking at the existing workforce that may be phlebotomists, CNA, that internal growth opportunities that they might not have had before right. that we're offering now through this through this um, 
process and through the expansion of our, our health and wellness center. How big will the building be? Right now, the preliminary design is 122,000 square feet. Yeah. It's two stories. It would also include a, a early college uh, high school that's all focused on medical sciences. Yeah. And so for a life sciences industry, which is growing rapidly as it is in North Carolina, to have this educational facility, it, it's it's a huge addition to the state, not only for an economic development perspective, an education perspective, but to have this workforce in training um, is, is really it's, it's, it's sort of an, another example of the state being a forward thinking. Um, you mentioned some of the specifics, but can you go through what specific types of life sciences curriculum you'll be offering, or are you probably still working that out? No, we're, we're pretty well okay. targeted okay. Okay. Uh, based on what the, so, so there's, there's nearly 800 job openings as we sit here today uh, in various fields across the healthcare sector and not only in Gaston Lincoln counties, but the counties that are contingent to us. So we're currently, you know, right now, uh, obviously the nursing programs are CNA, phlebotomists, medical assisting, uh, emergency medical science. Those types of programs were, were prominent with us. Since 2020, we have added seven new programs, healthcare informatics, which is all related to cybersecurity and medical records, central sterile processing, uh, central cell processing, which is 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 dealing with the the surgical labs. Sure. Yeah. And uh, you're talking also. We changed and added a practical nursing program for those students who are working to get on a pathway to a nursing program. Mm -hmm. uh, surgical technologists, respiratory, pharmacy technicians, uh, and nursing LPN to RN. We added again. And then right now, the two that's future targeted uh, for the facility and expansion of these programs is sonography and radiography. Okay. So if you think okay. about that classification, you're covering a whole spectrum of healthcare workers, not just in the nursing field. Yeah, it really is. I mean, that's smart. I, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised since you were willing to change jobs during a pandemic that you've got the courage to do something bold like this. <laughs> um, it's got to have an impact greater than just on the students and the healthcare industry. I'm guessing it's going to have a greater good kind of touch point to the community. It will. And, and this multi-layered partnership, and what I mean by that is you have three healthcare providers, the Gaston County Public Schools, the charter schools, everybody involved, as well as regional university partnerships so we can have transfer degrees from nursing into other four-year degree programs. So the uniqueness about this, most of the centers that you might be familiar with open up, it's, it's really all education. We are designing this for both. One, it's not only for, for our students that are, are enrolled full-time in our programs, but we're opening it up to, to industry. So industry can come and some, so there's some scenarios they might not experience during their, their regular working hours. They'll be able to do that with us in our simulation lab and that way we are strengthening not only the, the existing workforce, but building capacity with the, with the students that are coming through our program. So that's the unique part is the industry partnership and their engagement helping drive the new programs and what might be changing in healthcare industry. You mentioned partnerships and you specifically mentioned partnerships with Caremont and Atrium and Novant. Caremont's right there. Y'all are located in the same county. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's something that we've seen healthcare systems try to do, but this seems to have taken the concept of partnerships to a different level, which has a lot of potential benefit to all, all involved. Yeah. So, so my, my background in the last eight to 10 years, not only been industrial and manufacturing, but it has been in healthcare and if you look at the healthcare uh, employability and employment situation, if you tend to if you tend to, to retain an employee three years, you're likely going to keep them even longer in the healthcare industry. So, conceptually, I pitched this out to Caremont: Would you scholarship X amount of students for for whatever dollar value, and then enter a contract with that student, whereas they would stay with you for three years. And then beyond that three years, you know, they, they, they can do what they want or need. But by that time, 
you would have built relationships with them, confidence in them. They had confidence in you and the organization and potentially have out, uh, have a pathway to a career advancements too. So we did enter a partnership with Caramont for, for scholarships. When I arrived in Gaston County at Gaston College, they were, they were getting 21 of our nursing graduates. Now we have a class of 160 nurses in two year, for two year program. So you're talking about 80 students, they were getting 21 of those. The very next year they implemented this program, they got 42 graduates. Wow, double. Since immediate return on investment. Immediate sure. return. So so that's the ecosystem we're trying to build uh, and the partnerships and, and having them involved with what we're doing is critical to the success of this, this whole program. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, workforce development. Oh, yes. Right? Yes, from, yes. from high school on up, it sounds like. Uh, do you have goals? I know you said there are 800 job openings, and we've heard and talked on this podcast about the shortage of nursing just everywhere. Do you have any goals on what you would like to see this produce? We have currently about 1,200 health science students. The goal is to push that to 1,600. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you do if you do that and you look at you look at you now that twelve hundred is is two is is students are in first and second year, so you're talking about a four year period to address the eight hundred jobs. So that's a four hundred job difference. Each graduates are coming out uh, every two years. So that's one way. The second way is we have an East Gaston High School Health Academy. So they're offered introductory college courses in health sciences fields, whatever they may be, the life sciences, as you were talking earlier, Matthew, this is how we are trying to engage and educate and, and get folks to understand the, the uh, various avenues they can go. Right. The second component to that is, as I mentioned earlier, we do have an early college high school fully dedicated uh, to medical sciences and health sciences on our campus. This year, we graduated the first class of 12 students and then next year, that that full capacity in, in two more years will be 360, 320 students. So wow, that's impressive. So that pipeline is very different because that is a dedicated uh, facility, all focused on healthcare. And they may go on to a university and go on and get their doctoral degree, whatever they pursue as um, as physicians or whatever. Well, let's talk about the early college program because that that was on my list. Can you talk a little bit about? what the vision was and then the specific curriculum, because it is focused on um, uh, these medical and life sciences and it, are they're both clinical and business concepts associated with, with, with this curriculum? Well, so when I arrived, uh, Chris Peake, who is the CEO at Caramont and Dr. Jeff Booker, who was the current superintendent of the Gaston County schools had, had already envisioned what this medical science high school would be. What I changed uh, and got involved with was we moved it to our main campus. They had slated it for our Kimball campus. But I thought after we talked it together, we, we came to a conclusion that it would be better if they're on our main campus exposed to all of our health science programs and not just specific ones. So it is fully health sciences. Uh, and, and we have three of those graduates this past year that will be transferring into our program, a nursing program. But they'll receive a high school diploma and an associate's degree at the same time when they graduate from wow. high school. That's impressive. That's good. That's, good. That's really good. Would you talk a little bit about the actual simulation center? I don't want to assume I know what that means. And, and how does that work in, in with curriculum? Simulation is not a new concept. There, there are simulation centers around the state of North Carolina in community colleges and universities. So a simulation center is basically you have a mannequin that is programmed by a computer that can be controlled by someone in a separate room. So you can program that, that mannequin to have a heart attack. So that simulation enables the nurses, the, uh, the, the CNAs, whoever's in the room at that time to know what to do. So you train those elements up. What this center is going to be different is we're we're in, incorporating virtual reality, we're incorporating, incorporating arti, arti, uh, artificial intelligence, as well as augmented reality. 
So what that enables us to do is create surroundings that are not only life and real, but we can add digital elements to a live view. So we can have that digital element of that heart and they can have the you know, VR glasses on and other things. They actually can touch and feel and rotate that heart and see the critical elements and critical uh, arteries coming into and, and what needs to occur. This immersive technology is something that is uh, university medical schools and research schools have been using for the last couple of years and seeing drastic improvements in, in the capabilities of the doctors coming out. Why would we not have why would we not have that same technology for our nurses? Right. Why would we not have that same technology for our CNAs? That makes perfect sense. Since you're growing this um, and it seems to be on a rapid trajectory, do you have a problem finding adequate number of instructors? Um, because you're expanding. Well, here's here's a challenge, uh, and and the hospital CEOs and I talk about this. The the traveling nurse uh, component with the rate so high is a challenge not only for for the healthcare system, it also creates challenge for health educators mm -hmm. because they can make so much more money as a traveling nurse than they can be in a health educator. So yeah, we've had to increase our salaries. We've had to increase uh, our hourly rate for part-time adjunct salary. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a challenge. Hopefully you know, that pen pendulum will swing uh, a little bit back toward us. And we are seeing a slight shift there, but we have great faculty in our programs, as you, you probably know, with, if, you, if you, you can look our data up, <laughs> we have 100% pass rates last year. Uh, I'm, I'm unsure what they are this year at this point because they're still testing. And that's not just in the nursing program. That's in our LPNs and that's in medical assisting. So faculty here are great. Uh, it it is, has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. What would be other life sciences or challenges in the life sciences industry that have maybe caught your eye or that you're starting to see or the healthcare industry um, that you think needs a creative solution as well? The biggest challenge is, is clinical space. As you, as you think about, let's, let's talk about Charlotte Mecklenburg uh, as a big hospital area. You have Union County, you have Anson County, you have Stanley County, you have Gaston, you have all these neighboring counties because they have such larger hospitals trying to get in for clinical space. And as our enrollments have grown in the health science program across the North Carolina Community College system, that clinical space is, is Premium, premium opportunities, and it's li very limited as well. Hmm. Also with that clinical space, you had to have a nurse educator with them every 10, six to 10 um, trainees. So there's another, like, there's another problem. So I have an idea that I haven't really shared yet, and I'm, and I'm thinking um, that might turn into something that, that would help, is a possibility of having an on-site medical facility that would not only treat uh, patients, but could also serve as a training ground and clinical space outside of the hospital. You have the same setting, you have the same environment at a much smaller scale operated by a hospital right. uh, or a healthcare provider, but it would be on our campus. So we might be able to, to have, uh, if students need healthcare, if, if uh, you know, obviously the local community around us, faculty, staff need healthcare, they can go there and and uh, so it gives us another opportunity for clinical space. Is all I'm getting at. So that would be a that would be a, a, a creative, innovative partnership that probably does not exist on a community college right now. Have you seen any data about whether you're able to keep these local kids going here at working in the county or nearby counties because you're creating more opportunities for them um, by getting this clinical training? Have you seen more of that? I don't have that data in front of me, but I would assure you it's in the high 80% that stay okay. within our county. Yeah. 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 That's what the county has to like that. I mean, that's again, yeah. another economic development dynamic. Mm -hmm. That's exactly uh, you, right. When will the simulation center officially open? <laughs> well, we are waiting for our, uh, this was a state legislative appropriation. Um, first year was 15 million, second year is 45 million, 45 million. Uh, we have yet to receive the 15 million yet. So we have some conceptual designs. We've worked with an architect on to get the proposal approved. 
I'm telling you, we're hoping we can launch. We have our RF, RFQs ready, requests for proposals and quotes from architects. We're just waiting for the funding to to really hit our hit our books. So I hope for the next thirty days. <laughs> Let's assume you get the money by July one. Just to, what? How long does it take to build this hundred twenty two thousand square foot, you know, facility? With uh, and I just finished the fiber innovation center over at Kimbrell campus. Um, truthfully, we're probably three years out. Okay, but we're we're doing these things now. We just don't have the space internally to do them as right. effectively as what we'd right. like. Are we and we haven't added the, the virtual reality component yet and augmented reality component yet. Right. Well, this sounds like it's going to be a model for collaboration mm-hmm. in, in other places, in, you know, North Carolina beyond. It's worked mm-hmm. so well, so. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as we wrap up, can you talk about the importance of community colleges in the, in the, the critical role they play, not only in education, but in workforce development? We don't, we've talked before, we, this probably doesn't get enough recognition, community colleges and the role they play in helping businesses and create better workforces, but also educating the community that they're located in. So part of our mission is educate and care for people. People. That is our mission at Gaston College. Very simple. And I think when you simplify the value of community colleges, the value of the career that you're going to get instantly, and the opportunities you're going to have to advance that career based on that that skilled learning that takes place at a community college, it's invaluable. It's just invaluable. I am a community college graduate. Two years at Surrey Community College, transferred to UNC Charlotte, got into, as a mechanical engineer, into uh, an industry for 10 years, and then started into education. But my, my doors were opened because of a community college. Right. And without that initial skill set, I, I don't know what my path would have looked like, you know, 35 years later. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So well, that's a great I story. Am, I am confident because I've lived it, and I can tell this story, that... Mm-hmm this is the right path mm-hmm. and it opens doors for you. I bet it helps you. Your experience helps you see the possibilities too. Because Absolutely. Seen, and I can, yeah. I can talk to students because I, I've been in their shoes. I was not going to college. And so wow. um, my parents said, well, yes, you are. You're, you're going to do something. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, you know, I had an opportunity to play football at Elon and, you know, obviously the first year we could not afford that. And so the community college route came about, and, and, and here's what changed me. And this is the beauty of community colleges. You have faculty, and not that the university faculty don't, but the faculty at, at community college understand every situation you're going through, not only in my case, but some that might be single parents, some that might be taking care of their parents. And so they're working part-time. They're, they're doing a lot of different things. So... That professor at, at Surrey Community College told me, you have the ability. And then he followed me through those two years and even followed me when I was at UNC Charlotte. And that, you know, that meant more to me than anything really experience right. I've had. Mm-hmm. So that mentorship and guidance that we provide as, at community colleges is, is uh, really tremendous. Well, I'm glad he told you you could because you clearly are doing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Dr. John Hooser, thank you so much for joining us. It's exciting to hear what you've got going on at Gaston College. And, at, you know, we've got to have you back because yeah. we've got to continue to get an update, get an update Love to do it on again all of this. And, uh, and look forward to talking to you guys soon. All right. Thank you, sir. For those of you who joined us today on Taking the Pulse, I hope you are as excited as I am about what's going on at Gaston College and in North Carolina. And we hope you enjoyed this podcast and look forward to seeing you next time right here on Taking the Pulse, a healthcare and life sciences video podcast.